Half a day, everyone. We're back from recess and now in the Committee of the Whole. We're here to honor our special guest, Speaker Joaquin C. Ariola, who's retiring after 67 years of service to the people of Guam. I'd like to first recognize the presence of the Honorable Imagahog and Guahan, Honorable Lourdes Leon Guerrero, and of course our Lieutenant Governor, Joshua Tenorio. Thank you for being here. I'd also like to recognize the presence of the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Guam, Mr. Philip J. Carbolito. And of course, colleagues, thank you all for being here. And we also are joined today by the family of uh, Mr. Ariola. We have his children up here on the top, those who could be with us today here on Guam. And of course, we've, we are joined by some other family members in the back, uh, including grandchildren and uh, other relatives. However, we had a maximum capacity in here today, and we're trying to keep our guests of honor as safe as possible. So uh, we have to very much limit uh, who could be here, although there were so many people who wanted to join us, some of your former colleagues, some uh, others who have worked with you throughout your years here on Guam, but uh, unfortunately, we could not include them today. But uh, I have sent all of their messages to the family for, for you. Thank you. Um, all right, so um, we are here, of course, to celebrate, and I'm very honored to be here to uh, help in this celebration. Uh, Speaker Ariola has always been an icon to me and the other lawyers. He's our justice, one of the first justices on Guam, and uh, when we first started our Supreme Court. So he, we were very honored by that. And he's uh, someone we lawyers always learned about when we were starting out. We aspired to be like him. He blazed the trail for Chamorros and was part of many firsts on Guam. He's also very close to my family because he served with my dad in the legislature. They know each other well because, because of uh, being some of the very few Chamorro lawyers on Guam in those days. And, um, of course, I admire him for his perseverance, his intelligence, his excellence, and we'll feel very fortunate to be present to present this legislative resolution to him today on his, uh, on his retirement. He's been recognized many times over the years for different things, and so today uh, this is kind of a culmination of all of those. Uh, so I've asked all the sponsors of the resolution to help me read this resolution, and of course it's sponsored by all of the senators, uh, but, so we'll start with a few of them uh, who, who will help me read, beginning with our Legislative Secretary, Senator Amanda Shelton. Hafadeh, this is resolution number 9-36 COR. Relative to congratulating the Honorable Wakin C. Ariola on the occasion of his retirement after dedicating 67 years to the practice of law and to further recognizing and commending his 67 years of service to the people of Guam as a great legal mind and highly respected lawyer, justice, senator, and leader. Be it resolved by the Committee on Rules of Imina Trentai Saiz Nalahas the Torin Guahan, whereas the Honorable Joaquin C. Ariola has been at the forefront of Guam's legal history as a highly respected lawyer in Guam and the CNMI courts for 67 years as one of Guam's first Chamorro lawyers. He is the founding partner of Ariola Cohen and Ariola, currently known as Ariola Law Firm, Guam's oldest established law office and served as a part-time Associate Justice of the Guam Supreme Court from 1996 to 1999. And whereas, in addition to his extensive years of legal practice, the Honorable Joaquin C. Ariola was a senator in the third and fourth Guam legislatures, serving as the chairperson of the Judiciary Committee. Legislative Legal Counsel and Parliamentarian for the 5th, 6th, and 7th Guam Legislatures, and Speaker of the 9th and 10th Guam Legislature. 
His impact as a senator and speaker continues through the laws he passed, strengthening the judiciary, the hospital, the provision of health care to those in need, the protection and the best use of public lands, and many other laws establishing and organizing Guam's civil, criminal, and legal structures. And Whereas Speaker Ariola was a staunch advocate for greater self-government for the people of Guam, and as reflected in congressional records, Speaker Ariola spearheaded a movement against the federal comptroller position, arguing that the people of Guam were entitled to greater self-government and that the establishment of a federal comptroller outside the framework of the government of Guam represented a step back from this goal and implied that the people of Guam could not be trusted with the expenditure of public funds. The federal comptroller provision was ultimately removed from the federal legislation and... Whereas the Honorable Joaquin C. Ariola is from Hagatna, was born on December 29, 1925 in Hagatna, Guam, to Vicente F. Ariola and Maria S. Ariola. Joaquin and his five siblings survived the Japanese occupation of Guam during World War II and other atrocities. However, when the U.S. military returned to Guam, the teenage Joaquin Ariola took action and was wounded by a Japanese hand grenade while leading a squad of the 77th Infantry Division of the United States Army. After the war, he attended George Washington High School and graduated in 1946 and Whereas the Honorable Joaquin C. Ariola attended the College of St. Thomas in St. Paul, Minnesota from 1947 to 1950, graduating cum laude in 1950. He graduated from the University of Minnesota, Minnesota Law School in 1953 and passed the Minnesota State Bar the same year. He was admitted to the Bar for Minnesota in 1953. He was a member of the Guam CNMI and Trust Territory Bars and was admitted to the practice before the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals and the U.S. Supreme Court. And whereas in 1954, he married the late distinguished Senator Elizabeth P. Ariola, and together they had eight children, three daughters, Jacqueline, Anita, Lisa, and five sons, Vincent, Franklin, Michael, Wakin Jr., and Anthony, and... Whereas he served as chairman on numerous boards and commissions, including the then College of Guam Board of Regents, and was legal counsel to many government of Guam agencies. He was instrumental in organizing and forming the Bank of Guam, where he served as general counsel since its incorporation. He also served on the board of directors and as secretary for Bank Pacific. The University of Guam awarded the Honorable Joaquin C. Ariola its Doctor of Laws honoris causa on, in December of 2007, and whereas on January 5th of 2021, after 67 years of practicing law, he resigned from the Guam Bar Association, including having served as president from 1956 to 57, and the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands Bar Association. On the same day, he retired from the Areola law, law Firm. And? And whereas the Honorable Joaquin C. Areola was awarded the Guam Judiciary Astitia Award in 2014. The Astitia Award honors community members who promote respect for the law and an understanding of the judicial system, encourage civic responsibility and service and volunteer time, skill, and experience to the judicial system in serving the people of Guam. And whereas, in 2017, the Honorable Joaquin C. Ariola also received the Judge Christopher uh, C. Drenius Excellent Award, which is presented annually to someone selected by the Chief Judge of the District Court of Guam, who devoted a substantial part of his, his or her life to the practice or cause of the District Court of Guam the Ninth Circuit or related agencies. And? Whereas the Honorable Wakinsi Ariola exemplifies commitment, dedication, and outstanding public service, he has had a significant and lasting impact on the lawyers, judges, clients, government agencies, community members, the court system, and he has worked who he has worked with during these last seven decades. And he has contributed greatly to the practice of law and the legal profession in Guam and in the region. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Committee on Rules of Imina Trentai Sais, Nali Heslatur and Guahan, does hereby, on behalf of Ileslatur and Guahan and the people of Guam, 
congratulate the Honorable Joaquin C. Ariola on the occasion of his retirement after dedicating 67 years to the practice of law and does further recognize and commend his 67 years of service to the people of Guam as a great legal mind and a highly respected lawyer, justice, senator, and leader. And be it further resolved that the speaker and the chairperson of the Committee on Rules certify and that the legislative secretary attest to the adoption hereof and that copies of the same be thereafter transmitted to the Honorable Wilkinsey Ariola, to the Ariola Law Firm, and to the Honorable Lourdes A. Leon Guerrero, Imagahagan, Guahan. I'd now like to ask the Vice Speaker, the Legislative Secretary, our Majority Leader and Minority Leader, to please join me in presenting the resolution on behalf of the Guam Legislature to Mr. Ariola. Thank you, colleagues, and I will now invite our Imaga Hagen, Guahan, to please uh, have, she has a few remarks to make. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, members of the 36th Guam Legislature, my uh, surrogate dad, um, members of the Ariola family. Uh, I, I am not going to read because everything that's been said, we have also acknowledged. All the great things that this great man, Mr. Kin Ariola, who I call Tunakin, uh, is so deserving. And yes, his legal mind, his judicial acumen, his father of uh, eight great kids. And, uh, but I just have to say that beyond that, I think what's special about him is his way of strategically thinking on how to do things even if it means radical actions. And he's a man that is very courageous. He's a man that will try other, uh, maybe non-traditional ways of doing things. And I'll tell you a little story about Mr. Ariola. When my dad was trying to get the FDIC license, and you know this, he took the smartest legal guy with him to fight with the federal to try and get the uh, license for the bank to open. And they've been there for two weeks. And my dad would say, my dad said, Hafa Prim, Kotahano Tati. And Mr. Ariel would say, Mungat Prim, Tasaga Guineas Takita, Tsuli license. So they would go every day, and on the last day, they said to the head of FDIC, we are not coming back. You have to make a decision on this application. So they left. The next morning, my dad got a call from FDIC saying, you have been approved. And they were wondering, what was it that was happening? And Mr. Ariola for sure said it was because the day before there were the Native American Indians that were protesting at the FDIC 
and they thought it was people from Guam. <laughs> and so they said, we better, we better give them this license, otherwise these guys are not going to leave. So that's the story they say about how we got the FDIC license for the Bank of Guam. So that's what I mean. He's a very creative man, and I see everything of my dad in this great man. He was a great supporter for the people of Guam. He and my dad would talk many nights about how to protect the culture, how to really stand up our people, how to continue the pride of our island in our tradition and our practices, how to protect our lands, how to protect our language. And my dad has known Mr. Ariola since they were teenagers in high school. He knew when he was dating Senator Isabel Elizabeth Ariola because that's how far back he celebrated with my dad, the birth of all the children. And he celebrated with him about the lives of his family. So, Tunakin, Ginini Mastadungi Kurusonhu, Guahu and Sinanahu, and the family and mommy, Unayam Zu Gos Dunkluna Onra, put Todi Bidamu para itauto Guam. Zakun Gubetnu and Todi Gupanimenti in Naiho and Donkulu Nasidus Maasi Za Mas make a on you smotna Sidus Masi. Thank you, thank you, Governor. I'd now like to invite the Chief Justice, uh, Bill Garbolito, to please, yes, he would, to give some few remarks. You. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, for inviting me here today. And um, I want to greet our, our guest of honor, uh, Attorney Wikin Ariola, and uh, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, family and um, all the members of the legislature. I want to especially recognize attorney Mark Cowan, uh, who is uh, here uh, to pay tribute because he's been a fixture uh, next to Mr. Ariel in the practice of law. Um, unlike the Guam legislature and the governor, um, I don't have a judicial council resolution because we don't meet until next week. Uh, but thank you, Madam Speaker, for inviting me here today. Um, my, my comments are, like the governor, also personal. Uh, not many people know that, uh, first of all, when Attorney Ariola graduated from the University of Minnesota in 1953, I was three months old. Um, so uh, he's been around for a while, and that's why we call him the dean of our, our legal community. He's a pioneer in Guam's uh, legal profession and all those accolades have been uh, well learned. But, but my experience with Mr. Ariola is a little more personal, and that's because back in, uh, when I just came back from law school in 1978, um, one of the, my first job in the private sector in 1979 was with the law firm of Ariola and Cowan. And so I had the good fortune to uh, work for Mr. Ariola, And as a young associate, um, I, I, my office was two doors down from Mr. Ariola, and so I would wanted to impress him. Um, I would come in before 8 a.m., leave my door open. Shortly thereafter, Mr. Ariola would walk across because his law firm, his law office was two doors down. Around 6, 6.30, I'd keep my door open. He would walk out, and then I knew it was okay for me to leave, um, but I say this 
because this is a testament to the work ethic of this gentleman. Um, everything that he has earned, the tribute that we've paid today, we're paying him today, is because of his work ethic, um, his character, his values, and the influence that he's had in the legal community is all coming and being recognized in a tribute such as today. And his children so proudly standing uh, behind him, um, while all the children can be honored and recognized, he you know, certainly had a influence over Jay and, and Anita, who followed in his footsteps. Uh, when you read his um, uh, part of his life history, he didn't lead them into that, um, into the profession, uh, but it was because of influence and the emulation uh, that his uh, children have uh, that we see now in, in Jay and in Anita and, and, of course, all the other children. And um, they're very reputable, uh, excellent lawyers in our community, and it's a testament, I think, to, to Mr. Ariola. And so, Ken, on behalf of the Guam Judiciary, uh, the members of the bar, uh, I want to thank you, I want to honor you, and uh, congratulate you, because all the recognition you're receiving this past month, you know, I mean, it's because of your retirement, and that's very unfortunate that that's only when you get to be recognized, but you have earned every word that is said about you. And I'm just so honored and proud that I started my legal career in your law firm, and, um, and you have made a great influence in all of us as young lawyers, and I want to thank you for all your contributions to our community. Sujus Masi. Thank, thank you, Chief Justice. Now I'm going to have a few words from our honoree. Receiving the awards and the praise this afternoon. Beach standing up, beach receiving them, lying down in a box. <laughs> I, th I thank you very much. Governor, Madam Speaker, Mr. Chief Justice, thank you kindly for participating in this event. Uh, this building, Worm Congress Building, holds many pleasant memories for me. I spent many, many hours, many, many days in this building. On September 3, 1954, September 4, 1953, I stood here, faced the United States District Court presiding judge, Paul Schreiber, right here, took my oath of office as an attorney and got, admi and got admitted to practice, to the practice of law here on Guam. I mean, that is something. Appreciate very much. District Court, yeah. At the time and several years afterwards, this building contains the two branches of government, the judicial branch, the legislative branch. 21 members of the legislature, staff, District Court, Island Court people. This chamber was used by the trial court judge, district court judge, and later when jury was available, a portion in here was cut off and seats were available. Right behind us is the clerk's office, and uh, over there is judge's chamber, one room for the speaker, and the uh, conference room, legis uh, legislative uh, hall, now it's much bigger than it was then. The, the Superior Court, or then the Airline Court, occupied the southern wing here. The last office there was the clerk's office. Two chambers for the two judges. 
the small courtroom over the other side there was never used by the Adam Court judges. They handled the hearings inside their chambers. So it was never used. The legislature, of course, used this building for their deliberations. At the time, there were two sessions, 30 days in January, 30 days in July, for $600. Okay. The legislature was part-time, but they did hold hearings every now and then. I've spent time here as a member of four legislatures and legislative council for the fifth, sixth, and seventh, and then trying cases before this court in this chamber and there are the other one. There is one of the Memorable events for myself took place here at the conference room. After the election in 1966, the 21 winners, successful candidates for the National Government Legislature met, assembled to elect their speaker and officers of the legislature. Aspiring for the speakership that was my friend, Ricky Bordalia, let Ricky Bordalia, I was elected speaker of the legislature. That was a memorable moment. Let's go back to the September 4. At the time, only a handful of the district court people were present, and one, uh, the late Paul Polting an attorney who became my mentor and my law partner. He was the only one person. Today, I am very honored. We have the presence of all three branches of the government. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Chief Justice. There are people in here who were not present in my sworn-in sworn in back in September of 1953. They were not able to be present, circumstances notwithstanding. These are my favorite people, my family. To paraphrase General Douglas MacArthur in his speech, before the joint session of Congress upon his retirement. All lawyers do not die. They fade away. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We're very honored. And um, that concludes our presentation for today. Uh, Majority Leader, you are recognized. Rice. With this bossy, Madam Speaker, I move to rise from the Committee of the Whole and return back to the second reading file. On the motion, are there any objections? No objections. We will be in recess until 2 p.m. Sidus Masi.